Hello, and welcome to Creating Space in Conversation With. My name is Ingrid Pope. I am the founder of Creating Space, and our mission is to declutter the world of everything that gets in our way, everything that's too much, that clouds our judgment, that gets in the way of us being our best selves. Today, I'm delighted to be in conversation with Andrew Machen. Andrew is an ICF certified master coach. He has a passion for coaching and for helping coaches develop. He is highly experienced. In the past, he was a scientist and he is now also an author and a wonderful artist. Let's hear what Andrew has to say about clutter. He speaks very candidly about how it gets in his way. Let's see what we can learn from him. I hope you enjoy. Andrew, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me today. I'm delighted to have you today talking about all things clutter. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I wanted to invite you to this conversation is because you've had a few things going on around clutter and decluttering. And I just thought that that might be a really interesting conversation to have. So I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about where you are right now in terms of clutter and decluttering. Yeah, thanks Ingrid. And it's, uh, yeah, it's great to have this conversation. I'm glad, I'm glad we're speaking about what, to me, I think is vital. This, this idea of decluttering is something that is vital to my own life. Um, there's words that come in with the decluttering piece for me and the the last six months of my life have centered around the word surrender wow six months yeah and it's been it's been quite quite big i don't want to be over dramatic but it's been quite a big invitation and uh, i know when we've chatted in the past when you mention your decluttering I smile to myself because it seems to marry with this word for me around uh, surrender, mm. uh, space, you know, a sense of quietening, peace, particularly, I think, space. Uh, so, yeah, really excited to, to talk to you today and, and, and have a conversation on this. Mm. So, surrender, mm. please. Tell us more. Yeah. Um, so I believe that I default in my everyday life, almost without knowing and quite automatically, to a part of me. And this part of me, I'm going to admit openly, is a, a cluttered, a cluttered aspect of who I am. It's a part of me that is very preoccupied with doing and is equally interested in having. And it's quite compulsive. You know, when people talk about uh, going shopping and, uh, and, and talk about retail therapy, mm. th this aspect of me is a collector and almost a blind collector. It has a, a, a belief, I think, deep down that having more, wanting more, and having more is going to solve something profound. And may I say, even though I respect this part of me, and I know that it serves a really important part of my life, you know, it's a very quick thinking, very rapid. It, it protects me a lot. It, it saves me, for, you know, it's a very, um, it's a very, it's sort of a survival aspect of me. Even though I really, really value that part of me, it profoundly limits because what it does in my life is it creates clutter. Mm. 
Mm. It takes away space. Time disappears. There never seems to be enough. And when I live within the confines of this partial self, I find that there is never enough. And that includes space and I collect and clutter. And I get a sense that this can be all types of clutter also. So you talk about those yeah. things that you like to buy. Yeah, oh God, yes. And also the time and I guess yeah. the, the mind. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful invitation. Ultimately, the clutter is a reflection for me of a, an overactive mind, you know, that's very compulsive, that's always wanting to get it right, that's wanting to get it solved solved and get you know get to the right answer um I, and i think what you say is really really to the point there that cluttering starts in the mind and when the mind is not reflective and therefore has no space i think i default to this aspect of myself and the result is almost without knowing a uh, cluttering of the mind and a cluttering of my life. Mm. And I think that that might sound quite familiar to a number of people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, there's an aspect of me that's a little sad about it because if I can explain that, I, I, I do value this part in me. And yet, when I revert to this part, I have little awareness that my mind is already cluttered and that I gather the clutter. You know, that there's never enough time. Um, one thing is never enough. There's always something more. Um, and like you, you so beautifully point out, that reflects a state of mind. Mm. A, a state of, I think I've often said, you know, when I work as a supervisor, that the greatest uh, affliction of human nature is that we tend to overthink. And I think that's the clutter bug. Mm. And I know you and I have had this conversation where if I bring my clutter into the coaching session, um, it is pretty much guaranteed to go wrong. And that is partly that overthinking also. Yeah. I mean, it's a, there's some beautiful questions, isn't there, in here for us, um, for, for all of us, which is, okay, step one, I have awareness now of how I how I can almost without knowing clutter my mind and clutter my life. So, you know, then we can sit with these beautiful questions. So what, how, how do we go beyond the cluttering? You know, how, how, how do we achieve that? that yeah? That's the big question. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, in my own experience of this journey, the first step for me is to come to know and to be able to recognise the cluttered mind. Mm. And the person that uh, manifests as a result of that, you know, that when I revert to this, I call it my small self, when I revert to this small self, I'm over busy, I'm overdoing, I'm quite compulsive. Uh, I'm very objective, I'm not particularly relational. Uh, and, and if I put a, an umbrella over all that, mm. it's I'm over busy mm. and so is my mind. So the first step for me, because I'm often blind to that, is to recognize the times when I revert, divert, slip into overthinking. And I think some clues for me is when I'm anxious, 
And when I'm fearful, I often say those emotions are a measure for me of how far I've strayed from my whole self. So when I'm feeling anxious and when I'm feeling fearful, those emotions are clues to me that I may be in this state, you know, that I'm overactive in my mind and life and in cluttering mode. Mm, that's such an interesting thought because I developed a three pillar model around clutter and we talk about physical clutter and mental clutter and the third pillar is emotional clutter. So yeah. this is a different side of it. This isn't necessarily a cluttering of emotions, but this is spotting that when certain emotions perhaps surface, that's a signal to you that maybe there's something else in the mental space and the physical space that just might require a little bit of noticing and attention. Yeah, I think one of the ways I think about it, um, I think emotions are in, you know, so important to us and yet they are the things we would most reject. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we know in our coaching life and, and I know in all my supervision work, the importance of emotion. And in this context, my emotions are a guide. They are an invitation to reorientate. You know, they are an opportunity for me to remember, to recognize who I am and maybe to, and, and this is an interesting question, to choose who, who I really am, not who I think I am. The difference between these two people in my life, the whole self and my small self, the small self is who I think I am. The larger self is who I really am. It's the man that sits behind that mask. Mm. And he's different. He's, he's, not, um, he's not cluttered. He's not cluttered. And what allows him to not be cluttered? His mind is reflective. His mind is still. His mind is at peace. He is at peace. Uh, He's fully present. Well, it's a really lovely feeling to be without clutter. Uh, for me, it's uh, being, let's see if I can say this, being clutterless is the art of mindfulness mm. for me. And that's interesting because I talk quite often about decluttering in order to create space for something else yeah. and maybe it's for that mindfulness for that space to take in what is there yeah it's it's a very interesting transition i think i sense to go from cluttered self to what I perceive as decluttered self. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and there's been some lessons for me in life in that. And, 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 and if you're willing, I'll share a major one I've just had. I haven't Please do. Really made sense of this. So, um, I think I live on my little computer for most of the time. I do have a life outside, but I'm also uh, very creative. And uh, as an artist, the computer is also my palette. And, uh, but the computer stays very close to me. It's almost like a third limb. And over the years, uh, I think it was two years ago, I decided to buy a computer that had 
terabytes of storage. <laughs> and what I noticed, and, and the terabytes uh, were, have been beautifully used, if I might suggest, because one of the things I do love is photography. And I've been spending a lot of my time in some wonderful places out in the wilderness, sort of, for example, photographing the Northern Lights wow. over 10 years. Gosh. And, 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 and I have this volume of material which are moments caught in time, often many of them treasured moments, but many moments caught in time and they get stored on the computer. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, the terabytes disappeared and I noticed maybe a couple of months ago that I was nearing my storage max. It made me laugh because I think human beings are a bit like that and I'm including myself profoundly here whichever space you give us we take it yeah and then without even realizing how much we have cluttered and not recognizing what that represents in terms of a state of mind so to come to the story um, everything is on my computer um, and the first the first wave of Computergate, when, when the computer issue started, was the first thing that happened was, that's right, one day I made a telephone call quite innocently to the bank. The next minute my computer completely shut down. Uh, and it was a link with an email I got from the bank. I managed to find someone who could tell me what was going on. And he told me, he said to me, this virus has wiped all your data. Have you got a backup? Uh, I said, I have a partial backup. And he said, I can save your computer, but the space is gone and everything that's on there has gone with it. And, and this is the important point. I put the phone down at that moment and I sat very quietly with the realization that I may have something partial, but largely, the whole of what I'd collected, my collections, had, was gone. And whereas I might have imagined that at this point I would have run around the kitchen and won three Oscars in terms of dramatic effect, what actually I felt, which completely surprised me, was a huge, huge sense of liberation. Gosh sat down and uh, it gives me goosebumps when I think about it because something inside said thank God mm. and this is not to devalue what was on there I'm not doing that but just the fact and it reminds me of a Buddhist practice that has haunted me throughout my life which is Buddhists draw uh, paintings in the sand and the sea comes in and washes them away and they repeat the painting in the sand and there's something deeply meaningful for me in that practice which is to me the antithesis of decluttering it's the and it's the affirmation of surrender. You know, that things are temporal, time is passing, I will pass, I'm alive, I will die. Uh, it's a real honest acceptance of existence. Mm -hmm. And there's that word surrender again. 
Yeah, rather than a holding on to mm. my things, my stuff. Even when some of those things are extremely beautiful, some of those images I treasure, but they were gone. And I still have the moment somewhere. Mm. Uh, so just to very, very quickly complete the story is the second drive I had, which was of Computergate, which had my partial backup. One day, and I don't know how this happened, uh, I was plugging it into the uh, renovated computer and I heard this clunk click. And I, I, I cannot tell you how this happened, but a magnet attached itself to my, and, and I have little idea where the magnet came from, to my disc and wiped out the whole of the backup. Gosh. So Computergate 2 was an affirmation, it felt for me, from the powers that be, that there is no backup in life. Mm. And I started to laugh. I knew what had happened and I phoned my computer guy and I said, listen, magnets, do they wipe discs? And he said, oh, don't, don't ever have a magnet anywhere near your disc. I said, it's too late. It's just happened. And, and he was shocked and he was uh, in hysterics and a little in hysterics and he was, uh, you know, really panicking. And I said, listen, stop. It's okay. It is absolutely okay. And, I, and, and he said, well, you know, I'll have a look and I'll, I'll see what I can do, but everything's likely to be lost. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll come back to you. Don't worry. Don't worry for me. And I put the phone down and I sat again and started to laugh. I didn't feel panicky. I felt relief. I felt liberation. I felt freedom. And, um, and I must be ready for this because if I think of myself some years ago, I would have probably won an Oscar in drama effect. <laughs> but not now, not now. Now, now it feels the time to surrender and let go. And the joy of, in that moment of an uncluttered mind and the peace of knowing, um, of knowing that liberation in today's world where everything seems to be cluttered, felt a blessing at some level. Mm. Um, that's such a poignant story and I wonder as we come to the end of our interview if there was a lesson in there that you could perhaps share with your younger self what could that be I think yeah I the lessons for me I have a mantra in my life now. My mantra is stop before you start. So as I face my smaller and younger self, one of the things we did quite well, we didn't, we, we didn't fail at this. And starting even earlier may have been great, which is Rather than my life to be a sentence, word after word after word after word, for each moment of the day to put some punctuation in, a comma or a full stop, which is a way of remembering, you know, who I really am, not who I think I am, and a way of tempering, overthinking, so that I start to pause and pace my life. Now, I am blessed that mindfulness is an important part of my life. And my invitation and my offering to my smaller self and anyone else is to remember to punctuate your life. 
to put in the comma and the pause and the full stop. And for me, whenever I get tempted to enter the cluttered mind, I stop before I start. That's my invitation. Mm. And it permits me to look at things more clearly, look at things more carefully, look at things in an expanded awareness from the whole of who I am, not from that confined part of me that's over busy and wanting just to sort things out. And um, that would be my offering. Mm, that's beautiful to punctuate, to mm. take stock and to stop before you start. It makes me think of um, Marie Kondo, who has taken the world by storm um, with her decluttering and tidying. But she talks about how all our stuff contributed to making us who we are today. Hmm. And we don't actually need the stuff mm. anymore. We don't need the items anymore because mm. they have already contributed to making us who we are and we are who we are. Mm. I'll tell you, I'll make a distinction there because it's very, very interesting. There are certain objects that I know now if this house were to burn down, which I hope to God it won't. But if it were to burn down, I would grab and I would take with me. And there are two items, art items, I treasure. And what I've realized about these items, uh, and nature as well, nature is so important to me. But what I've noticed about these particular things is that when I see them, they stop me in my track. Mm. So the things I would say from the fire are the things that invite me to stop and reflect and that they're, they're only small but i adore them um this sounds mad but you know like the um in egypt the pharaohs when they pass they take items into their coffin i feel like taking these things with me mm. because they have brought the most important moments of or reminders, they are the reminder, the constant reminder of the, the need to reflect. Uh, yeah. Sounds like they're almost a physical representation of that comma. Yeah, that's lovely. Physical representation of the comma, the full stop mm. and the deep uttered mind. Mm. You know, it's very interesting. I, if you think about the mind, what we're speaking to is a reflective mind, is a mirror mind, is a, uh, yes, there are aspects of the mind in terms of rationality and processing, mm. but what, what I think we're pointing towards, you know, Ingrid, and it'd be interesting to think more about this, is the whole mind and how the whole mind is very different to that aspect of the mind that can steal us from ourselves and cause this cluttering. You know, it's very mm -hmm. interesting. I feel we might have to have a follow-up conversation. <laughs> I'm here, I'm ready, I'm <laughs> delighted. I love uh, the work you're doing on cluttering. I've always said this to you, so I'm gonna say it here and now. I think you're onto something very special and you can see that it's been a, um, a vital aspect of my own life. So I love what you're doing. I just want to tick everything. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And thank you very much for taking the time today for this conversation and we'll watch this space. There might be a follow up. Thank, thank you. you very much, Andrew. It's a pleasure. Wow, what a story. Imagine losing everything on your computer and how that might feel. Would you be winning an Oscar in drama or would you perhaps sit back and with time feel a sense of just relief and freedom 
freedom. Now, what an interesting conversation. How our cluttered mind can really get in our way and can be distracting us from who we actually really are. And how Andrew's step really is to stop, stop before we start and punctuate our days and our lives with moments to pay attention and to notice. I'm curious as to what his pieces of art are that stop him in his tracks and I wonder what might help you remember to punctuate your day, bring in that comma or that full stop to help you just stop and reflect and unclutter your mind for a moment before you go on to the next thing. Now there might be a part two, <laughs> as we just saw, um, but in the meantime I hope you enjoyed this conversation and look out for more conversations about creating space.